and welcome back to the mini smithy this is going to be the first of many videos where i show you how i create and use these modular train blocks first thing is the base foam part so i can later put rivers in this terrain i am using this artec two inch by four foot by eight foot rigid foam insulation which you can get from home depot or something and the first thing I'm doing is removing the paper and junk from the outside of it because we will not be using this as actual insulation. So here are perfect squares of sheet metal that I had Discount Steel actually laser cut for me to be 11 and 15 sixteenths of an inch, perfect squares. And here I have the foam cutter and you can actually use the metal chunk to get the exact right distance from the guide wall to the wire itself so that way when we cut the styrofoam it's the exact same size as the metal that we're going to be gluing to the top of it. So now for the actual adhering to the styrofoam, I use Mod Podge for this, which I use for everything because it's a water-based glue. And uh, it's really nice to be able to dilute the glue. And the process I do for this is I just take a big glob of it from the container of Mod Podge and then just kind of smear it around a little bit. And then I dip the brush into a glass of water, which is just normal tap water. And then that I then mix with the glob that's already on there. and it helps really to spread out the glue but also since it's diluted it dries slower so i have more time to actually spread it out evenly and then put the metal on there once the metal's on there you can kind of use your fingers on the corners to make sure that the metal and the styrofoam are perfectly aligned And if you're using the same insulation I did, which is four by eight, that should then produce enough pieces to cover a four foot by eight foot table, which is 32 pieces. Next thing is primary. Not sure if it's actually gonna help with the gluing process of gluing the flock on there. It might help a little bit, but the main reason I wanna prime it is because if we're playing and the buildings get like scratch up the flock, I don't want that very bright metal to show through, it'll be very obvious. So if it does get scratched off, it'll just be this nice earth tone underneath. So that's the goal. I'm using this flat brown Rust-Oleum. Um, it says it stops rust, so that means it's meant for metal, right? That's how that works. Here's the first kind of test piece. It's drying still, but it's nice and flat. That's just what I want, a nice brown for underneath there. When I do this though, I want to spray the each edge first at kind of like an angle away from the styrofoam. It doesn't matter if this gets oversprayed because that overspray, the propellant would fade away by that point. It's just the initial, whatever the spray is hitting close up, that's where the propellant could be an issue for the styrofoam. So that's why I want to go at an angle like this away. I'll kind of show you that here. See I'm at an angle spraying away. Just getting the edges for now. Now I'm doing this angle and then down like this. So that way you only get the metal and not the styrofoam underneath. You're still gonna get some overspray down here when we're on the cardboard, but that's, it's not a big deal. It's not gonna make it melt there. But you wanna get the edges first so that way it's easier to just spray the center and not focus so much on the edges because if you're going straight down, that'll be, a, that'll be an issue. So once you get the corners all finished, which, let me get this one. Then you can kind of just go back and forth. To get this center. You should be able to get this all in one coat. It is kind of difficult, but, and you don't want to be super close up to the metal either. 
because that then that can cause cooling and that's definitely not what you want you'll have big lumps on the on your terrain so once it's done I'm just gonna move it over here on a flat surface that way if there is any pooling of paint it's not gonna it's not gonna start running on you and cause a lump so let's do it also wear one of these Huffing paint is bad kids I literally just ran out of this and I am completely done. That is perfect timing! Alright, so next, everything's primed up. I did my first four things of flocking and I learned some things. So the process is I water it down a little bit, dip it in here, just slap it on. You can even just get more water. You just want it a little bit watered down so that way the glue flows nice and it will dry slower because it's really hard to, oops, see I did it wrong, I did it wrong. And now I picked up a lot of flock, but it doesn't matter because I'm putting flock down anyway. Um, but it gives you more time because it does take a while to get it spread across here. And that time that you're doing this is it's drying and it won't pick up the flock as well if it's still dry. So I'm actually gonna get a little bit more water here and some more glue. But yeah, so you wanna be on the edges, brush away from the center. That way you're not getting any glue on the sides, um, which could mess up the way the blocks sit together. It's gonna to be very minimal, but might as well do it right, right? So brush away from the sides, get that off to the side, cover this up because the flock goes everywhere. And then Woodland Scenics Earth Blend. I like to get the sides first because <clears throat> that's where the most wear is going to be. So you really want you really want a good coat on that, and then just shake it over to the center like so. And then you can can get closer in, get all the little spots covered. But shake it off, tap the back. I blow, blow very lightly and also don't blow down like this, otherwise that's gonna go everywhere. It's gonna be up. Very easy to move. So just do that. Okay. Makes sense? Good. All right, I'm gonna keep going. It's also best to do this over a chunk of cardboard like I have or a big piece of paper. Whatever is easy to lift up and funnel all of the leftover flock back into the container so you can use it again. And I even brought my rolly chair out here. So hey, you can roll around, it's kind of fun. Whenever you're doing something monotonous, make it as fun as possible so you don't lose your mind. Pro tip. So flocking's all finished, as you can see. Um, we tried moving them into the game room and onto the table, which it looks awesome and it will look awesome. But when we did that, this happened, which we realized is gonna be a huge pain in the butt, trying to vacuum up everything every time we play a game. The flock will just come off slowly as we play on it and we'll have to keep vacuuming and vacuuming and vacuuming. So. To fix that, I'm gonna use some Mod Podge, really watered down in a spray bottle, and then just mist over the whole thing, which I'll show you here. Now I can just pour Mod Podge straight into this and then shake it up, ready?
Oh, yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. It needs to be still liquidy so that it can actually move around. But now we're ready. So as you can see, the little droplets, there's, it'll look white where the drops hit for a while, but once it dries, it dries as a clear matte finish. So you're not, you're not going to notice, you're not going to notice it once it's dry. I got something in my eye. There's still going to be some that comes off, but there's going to be a lot less that comes off. So doing this, just kind of roughly, roughly scoring the top of it with your hands. And then you can just blow over it, but having an air compressor is super nice for this. Gets a lot more of it. Yeah, I, I, won't, I go over it twice, just because the air will remove all the little particles and then it might allow you to get more the second time. And then I well, that just to bake it all clean. Okay, so just roughly score it. And you can feel all the ones that are sticking up quite a bit just get peeled off. As you can see, all this stuff. We don't want it. We don't want it in the house. So. Go over it another time. At least I am, just to really, really try to get everything. Which, there's still gonna be some, some of this left, but makes it a lot better. So now I'm gonna show you how I created these nifty magnet boards to help move the train around. So what I'm gonna make this is just as simple as it possibly can get. This is just a two by two chunk of wood. I'm gonna cut it, it needs to be at least four feet long because you cut it down to 47 and three fourths of an inch. And it's 47 and three fourths of an inch because each of the metal sheets that I had discount steel print out or laser cut out was 11 and 15 sixteenths of an inch. So then for each foot, I have 1 16th of an inch less. So that way the, the boards aren't rubbing up against the walls of the four by eight foot table that we've created. That's why I need this to be 47 and three fourths of an inch because that would be four sixteenths of an inch less than four feet. I hope that makes sense. So this is the width of a block. And since I'm gonna eventually have a river going through each block through the center, there's not gonna be metal here so I wanna put the magnets on these sides. So I'm just gonna do, just keep it simple. I'll go one and a half inch past each side. So one and a half inch there, and then one and a half on this side as well. So now I want to put the magnets in here and the idea is I want to put them close to this edge but not all the way to the edge. So I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap. I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap here but I still want it close to that edge because then I'm going to roll this. I'm going to sand this edge down so that way you can just roll the board and it will detach the magnets without lifting the pieces up. So I'm gonna make it three eighths of an inch, so that way I have about about an eighth of an inch of wood still there.
So now I will be using a paddle bit to make a little hole for this thing to go in. Five eighths is pretty close. It's a little bit over, which is exactly what we wanted anyway. So, but before I do this, cause this can kind of wobble all over the place, I'm gonna make a little, a little divot with just a screw and a hammer, which I know is not the most professional way to do this, but I'm doing it anyway. Okay, so now I only wanna go down as much as the magnet is because if you go down too far, then that will be sunk into the wood too much and then it won't have as strong of a hold. I only wanna get it flush to the wood surface. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of this, test it, do a little bit more, test it again until it's flush. Okay, <laughs> definitely not flush. Okay, that's super close, super close. All right, that's perfect. So this is what we're looking for. We want it really just barely in there. And look, it can wobble around, but that's fine. Okay, and then we'll screw it in. But I'm gonna make, make each hole first. So next thing is adding the magnets. I'm gonna also do wood glue on them, just because, I mean, that, that paddle bit gives a pretty big hole, and the only screws that will fit in these is a number four. So I am using these number four half inch. You could probably use a number four like one inch, and it would go into the wood more, but I just don't have them, and I'm not gonna go make a trip to Home Depot just for that. So I'm gonna use this along with some wood glue. When I push this in, you can still tell that there still will be some threading, some of it threaded into the wood because the screw is still sticking out. So it's plenty, it's plenty. Oh, huge thing that you need to know. These magnets are pretty weak and a drill can easily just break them in half. So if you have a drill with these settings, I have it at I'm just gonna go one and see if that actually drills it in all the way, just to be sure. Cause I mean, they're not super cheap, so. Might as well keep them safe, right? So I'm just gonna get it smeared around the hole too. Man. Look at that, look at that. Okay, number one got it, just fine. So if you do mess up some of them to where they're like a little bit too deep into the wood. You really don't want that or else the magnet's not gonna grab as well. So it is okay to use a sander to just sand over the top of them. It'll, it might create some sparks if you go too low, but that's, that's fine. Okay, so now I need to create the pivot point. So I'm gonna sand down this edge here It'll be eventually like a 45 degree, but I'm gonna make it just like a nice curve around the whole thing. 
Um, that way the magnets will be on like this, but then you can just roll it up and it'll be an easy way to disconnect the magnets without lifting up the blocks underneath. Okay. Okay, so I was just inside trying this out. These aren't as strong as I'd like them to be, so I'm just gonna add more. I'm gonna add double what I have here, so I have just enough for adding eight more magnets. Okay, so now I'm making the thing that grabs one board at a time. So, one by three, in other words, one and a half by two and a half, because what is stupid? So I'm gonna use these rectangle ones, which is gonna be more difficult. Ah! It's gonna be more difficult to put this into the wood, but we'll use like a chisel and stuff, so. Yeah, let's do it. I'm basically just gonna line this up with the wood and then make a mark. So now you can see each, from each angle, where I need this to go. So I'm just going to use a paddle bit and then I'll do some chisel work. Got my magnets on there, pretty good. Um, so now I'm gonna add this curve on here. So that way, prying the magnets up is gonna be easier with that sanding. Okay, so now just with a hand sander, I'm just gonna make the edges nice. You don't want anything like that, because we're gonna be using this quite a bit, so try to sand that away. Okay, blocks are on the table, it looks sweet. Um, you're probably wondering why I did all this. Well, one of the main reasons is for being able to move the terrain all at once. Um, so just for example, let's say that the players meet up with the homeowner of this place and the homeowner's like, oh, the bandits in this area are terrorizing my family. Could you please deal with them and I'll pay you greatly, right? Typical quest. So the players have to move north through the woods and then they realize the bandits are held up in this ruined cathedral, right? They fed battle through that, but then Let's just say more bandits show up and they, the only means of escape is going this direction, right? So what if you actually have more for them to do over here? Instead of moving the cathedral over and the trees and the buildings, which then will change the distances that you originally had them set out, which could cause some arguments. Instead, you can leave the train where it already was and we can use this nifty stick that we just created. This, this smoother part where it's kind of rounded off, I use that to set like this, and then that way I can just kind of roll this down onto the blocks. And you can lift four at a time like this, bring them over here. And then, this is the best part. 
So all of this terrain that's already been set up and measured out and players know the distances and whatever, all of it gets moved at one time. Look at that. Now the players have more space over here. You could have another building set up over here, whatever you want. And then that way, if they do need to go back this direction for whatever reason, all of these distances are the same. They're not gonna be complaining about like, oh, you put the building further away this time or anything. We know for a fact that this is how it was when they were here. You may be asking why I put it on two inch tall styrofoam underneath the metal. Well, that's because I'm really picky and I hate the look of river pieces that sit on top of the terrain. So later I'll be adding river pieces and so we can actually cut the, I'll be cutting the metal here, going across, or I'll make pieces where the river goes this way or whatever. Um, and, but that way we can actually cut into the styrofoam and make the river down into the ground, you know, where water actually runs instead of sitting on top of something. <clears throat> And we'll be able to, with this super nifty single block remover, make little winding rivers through the terrain wherever I want it to be. Another reason is because of stuff like this. Tabletops, worlds, miniatures, like a dock or like a water mill. So I'm actually gonna attach something like this to a block for itself. So this building will be a block that can take up one of these pieces and there'll actually be a river going through here there'll actually be water powering the water mill and it would just continue on and then the rest of the river blocks can just be connected into that. So I'm super excited to get that stuff going. Anyways, I hope you liked this idea. Obviously we're not using grids anymore. We're just gonna be measuring the distances with inches, uh, like a ruler or something. Same way you'd measure stuff for Warhammer. Like, oh, this unit has five inches of movement, whatever. 5 inches equal 30 feet in D&D, so it's pretty simple. And uh, stay tuned for my next video where I show you how we built this table, which is kind of a copy of like Wormwood. We have a metal strip here. So for instance, things like this, which is just a prototype, we haven't stained it yet, but a little cup holder. And then we're going to make like player stations and everything. So stay tuned for that. I'm super excited.